Hey, what's up guys? Santos here, back with another video. So there's been a lot of questions uh, regarding the truck, how much I spent, uh, stuff like that. So I know that I told you all that as soon as I got the truck back, I was gonna make a video. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Uh, before we start, I wanna thank everybody for all the support, all the positive feedback. There's been a lot of good feedback that I've been getting on the truck. So I really appreciate it. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We are halfway to our next subscribers goal. Currently, we're at about 2,500 or so. And uh, I know I talked about in the previous video that when we reach 5,000 subscribers, we're gonna be doing a cam kit giveaway. So, so if you want the opportunity to get a cam because you've always wanted one or you're in the market to buy one, then what a better opportunity than to have that opportunity to win one and that is by just simply subscribing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So of course we wouldn't be here without the Mamalona. Whenever I bought it, it was on a six day drop with 20 inch wheels. Uh, it already had the cam. It already had the headers in it, the sound system, the sunroof. So that's how I bought it. Six day drop, 20 inch wheels, cam, header, sound system, sunroof. I ended up paying 6,300. That's what I ended up paying. Uh, for the truck whenever I uh, picked it up. I bought the hood, the grill, the chrome headlights, and also the black valence. For the hood, I paid 400 bucks. For this primer HD grill was 100 bucks. For the chrome lights was another 100 bucks. And then for the bottom valence was $60. I bought it new off of uh, OfferUp. So $60 for the valence, uh, 100 bucks for the chrome lights, 100 bucks for the grill and then 400 bucks for the hood shortly thereafter i had the truck painted the front end that is um so that you know i would have the whole front end matching when i did that i had the painter paint obviously the hood the grill the bumper pad the bumper he also went ahead and blended the fenders for me so the whole front end would match he painted the mirror caps and also there used to be a dent on the driver's door down here that was there whenever I bought it. I paid a thousand dollars for him to do all that. Paint the hood, the grill, bumper pad, bumper, blend the fenders, mirror caps, fix the dent, and he also went ahead and waxed the truck. So I thought it was a pretty good deal. He, he was actually the, the cheapest quote that I got. There was a guy wanting to charge me 1800 bucks there was another guy trying to charge me 2400 bucks so i ended up paying a thousand dollars that's what i ended up paying to have the whole front end painted the inside of the truck i haven't really done too much to other than replacing the center console when i bought it it had i think it's you call it the jump seat um i didn't really like that i wanted the center console so the center console this trim under the steering column and also the glove box. I think I ended up paying like 250. I didn't pay any labor because I did it myself. But yeah, 250 for the center console, the trim under the steering column and also the glove box. Next was buying this three piece back window. Whenever I bought the truck, it didn't come with this back window. Um, I think I ended up paying like 500 bucks for it. Yeah, I probably overpaid a little bit. Right, but it's one of those things que el niño la quería right then and there. So uh, it ended up costing me, but you know, it's too late now, there's nothing I can do. But yeah, if I would've shopped around, maybe I could've found it a little cheaper, but back window is like 500 bucks. And then I think I paid like $80 to have it installed. So back window installation was 580, something along those lines. For the wheels, as you guys know, I have 26 by nine in the front and then 28 by 12 reverse in the back. The wheels I bought with tires already um, from LA Team Billet, of course, out there in California. I ended up paying at 7,400 for the wheels. As I'm making this video, my girl's recording. Uh, she doesn't really know how much I've spent on the truck. So, ahorita a lo mejor que lleguemos a la casa, van a llover chanclazos, verdad? Pero, hey, es mejor pedir perdón que pedir permiso, so. After buying the wheels, it's when I made the first trip up to Reckless to let them know what I was gonna be running in terms of wheel size and what my plan was with this build, how I wanted you know, to build it. My initial plan was to keep it static. The intention was not to bag it in the front. Like I said, I wanted it to keep it static the whole time. Um, but you know, it's just watching videos, getting different ideas, 
that's why I ended up changing my mind. So the initial trip that I made to Reckless, you know, I told them what setup I was running with, like I said, in terms of wheels. We plan to lower the front two more inches. Of course, the front tubs, the hood strut kit, the relocation of the fuse box, the relocation of the coolant reservoir, all that was already included. The firewall also in the back. You know, I told them that I wanted to run the coilover kit. So monster notch, coilovers, right? New brake lines, new axles the rear end shortened, monster notch cover, rear tubs, all that was already included. He quoted me 7,700 is what I was gonna pay. Again, 7,700 for all the work. So as the build progressed at Reckless, I was really skeptical on how the truck was gonna look with it being just static. I wanted to make sure that it was something that I was gonna be happy with as soon as I drove off in it. I wanted to be sure that, that I was going to love, that I was going to enjoy, that I was not going to regret spending the money on. He asked me, he's like, you ever thought about bagging the front? Julio and I were talking, you know, entertaining different ideas. And then that's whenever he asked me, he's like, hey man, you ever thought about bagging it? He's like, that way you can, with the coilovers in the back, you can adjust it to whatever height you want. He's like, if you are static in the front and you're not happy with it, you're going to have to bring it back versus you being back in the front, you control whatever height you're at. You can lower it, you can go up. It's pretty much at your disposal for what level you wanna be at in terms of drop. I thought about it, I thought about it, I thought about it, and I called him, you know, and I asked him, I was like, hey, how much is it gonna cost? So he, he had already quoted me 7,700 to do the coilover kit in the back with all the work and then keeping it static in the front, right? So. Whenever he and I talked about doing the bags in the front, he told me that I was gonna be an addition of $4,000. $7,000, you know, what we talked about, and then if I wanted to go ahead and bag it, it was gonna be an additional $4,000. So, again, van a llover más chanclazos cuando llegue a la casa, pero es mejor pedir perdón que pedir permiso, right? So, I ended up, uh, obviously, bagging the truck. You asked me my honest opinion, was it worth it? Absolutely. I absolutely love the way that truck came out. Um, like I said, she doesn't know how much I've spent. Um, she asked me, hey, how much did you spend? And I told her the same thing that, you know, uh, a lot of you have asked me, hey, how much did you spend on this? How much did you spend on that? And, you know, I told you guys, hey, I'm going to make a video explaining how much I've spent on the truck. And, you know, I told her, hey, I guess we're going to have to find out whenever I, uh, I make the video. So in terms of uh, suspension, uh, I ended up paying right around uh, 11,000 what I ended up paying uh, for the build. So yeah, it wasn't cheap, but you guys know the quality of work that went into it. Pretty much everything was custom made. Um, so you know, you gotta pay to play. I did go to another shop before I went to Reckless and they, were, they quoted me $3,000 to do the whole static, but I'm not gonna name the shop. I've seen them on Facebook. Um, and actually while I was there, they were on the phone trying to find used parts to slap on a vehicle that they were working on. There was a truck that they were working on that they were dropping and they were missing parts and they were calling around, you know, to, uh, to try to find used parts to slap on that vehicle, you know, so they could turn it into the customer. To me, I don't think that's right. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable. Obviously it was a lot cheaper than what I paid, you know, at Reckless. But at the end of the day, it's just one of them things that maybe cheaper is always not the best route to go. So if you ask me if it was worth it, absolutely, it was definitely worth it in my opinion.